Greetings and salutations, everybody. We are back on League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. It's been a minute. It's been a whole year since we've been back on here. But now it's 2024. It's it's a new world that we're living in. And my New Year's resolution is to be nicer all around, which is why we're looking at the worst teams of all time today, where we're not going to be nice at all. You got to take that trip at the beginning of the year to reflect on a lot of the bad, a lot of the bad years, all these examples, and we're just going to lay them out for the for the league community, for the players, for the teams. Everybody else can then take that look after this year is done and say, did we get anybody else onto this list? And, I mean, you're hard-pressed to beat any of the squads that are going to be on here. We're doing, this is only major region squads we're going to be looking at. Yes, it's easy to pick some wild card minor region squad who didn't win for three straight years or something, but we're only doing major region squads. We got a, I'm going to say, terrible team from all of those top four. And of course, in classic NA fashion, we get not one, but two teams we can talk about when you're looking at worst squads of all time. I feel like immediately most people jump to 2015 spring team coast who went one and 17. The real tragedy is they picked up a win in week one. So, you know, one and one things looking fine. And then they proceed to lose 16 games in a row. It very much was a situation of, I remember that split very well and watching and following it along and being like, okay, they're fine. One on one, middle, you know, nothing's going on. Like, see, we're going in the next week. And then week after week after week after week, nothing improved. It's got worse after worse. And it really became an example. And one of the, you know, uh, main examples that you really can think of, of being way behind everybody else in the league. Yeah, they, I mean, they still had. One of the highlights, of course, is the horrible Baron call where they just decide to try and get Baron and then that end up giving up Nexus, losing the game, a classic NA move. But this is Jez's and Impaler come over, and this is 2015. There weren't very many EU imports coming over to the LCS, and obviously they ended up being a massive flop in NA. And we have seen that continue <laughs> multiple other times with other imports coming over to the region. So certainly not the first, but it was as you laid out kind of that first wave that really started to come over, really started to be that slope that eventually would be turned into that slippery slope of importing for the region in North America. It didn't work out, it didn't perform. And I think a lot of people can look back at this as a very significant failure within the LCS and such a failure that we've seen many other failures before, come after this one. And every other one does not compare, does not stack up until you look back at the Coast era. The only other one you can talk in the same conversation is 2016 Summer Echo Fox. And listen, there were some moments in the Echo Fox era that you could talk about being excited about the squad. Obviously, Froggen was always at the forefront, but 2016 summer was not it. They tied Coast for going 1-17 and 17 overall and also picked up a win in week one before going on to lose, you know, the remainder of the games. But this is when best of threes were around. So you had 8-34 and 34 overall for Echo Fox, which when we get to the rest of the teams on this list, is actually a lot better than them, which is saying a whole lot. It's the scariest thing to say that this Echo Fox team is probably the most successful out of all these notable <laughs> failures. <Chills. laughs> yeah, when you're thinking about it, you do have to take that time to look back and, and go through those games, go through the player performances as you laid out and the reasons, because there were reasons to be excited about this Echo Fox team, even looking through those performances, seeing Frog and seeing what he could do individually there was something there i think it was very quick to understand that the rest of the pieces around him as, as players was not going to be able to perform not going to be able to continue and carry the game to that level necessary to get across the finish line even in the lcs we had mr keith mcbrief you remember if you're familiar with you know now we're getting old school in the LCS, he subs in for Team Liquid. He's a standout performer, eventually gets a starting spot, but never really gets that same flash in the pan on Echo Fox. They had three different junglers that got starting time, including Mr. Grigny at the time, now known 
as our Mayo. That's right, 2016 was when this dude was getting his debut. Grigny, Grig, our Mayo, whatever. My man has been in the LCS. He's gone through the rough times of the LCS. Hey, which one? Which one do you think is worse, the TSM situations or the Echo Fox time? I, I'll let you decide at home for that one. It is one of those ones where you do look back at it, and I think there is an instant recognition of what a failure of a year that was, this iteration of that Echo Fox. Yet there still is enough within that, you know, trash heap that you could go through and pick out your little gems for next year that you would build around and have a resurgence for Echo Fox. And, I mean, a resurgence was basically making playoffs. You know, that's that's kind of the standard. And but that, again, that's better than being, like, a legendarily bad organization. Yeah, I mean, Team Coast, most of these guys, their careers were could never recover from what happened in 2015, except for maybe Jez's, who eventually found his way roll-swapping out of mid lane uh, when he ended up going on to Fnatic as their starting support. But, yeah. Eight wins still enough that I think you're putting Coast below as that worst LCS team. The other three major regions, I think it's a lot more cut and dry who is at the bottom of that barrel. And bottom of the bottom has got to be either LCS or the 2017 LEC squad Origin, who not even two years before this were making the semifinals at the World Championship and then all of a sudden, they're going 0-13. and 13, Two wins overall for an entire split. They're playing 75-minute games that have 13 kills. Xpeke is roll-swapping the support. This was a disaster class year. Oh, man. When I look back at the, at the first two that we talked about, there are things that I remember just starting to become a fan of League of Legends, just starting to then eventually move into a territory, doing it for a career, working on a show like this type of situation. Origin, I was in the thick of it. I was deep into the league scene at that point, and man, oh man, do I remember all the hype, all the excitement, and the massive disappointment that came to that screeching halt right out of the gates for the LEC with Origin. Expecta in that role that we thought so many people could see a level of success could come through individually i don't think his level of commitment was there and neither were the other players that you would look at a little bit more seriously for their level of commitment to the team and going into this season when this roster was announced most people were like chalk that that's the number 10 team in the lec nahun comes over and if you recall the whole split is highlighted by him ending his 32 game losing streak across multiple regions even you know the ldl coming over to the lec some lck and the whole season is celebrated because origin and nation picks up a single win which is that is not the way that you wanted to crown off the legacy of expecte one of the most legendary early time players of the game of League of Legends, especially one of the absolute pillar and icons of the scene within the European region for League of Legends. And one of this... the greatest support karma players of all uh, time. <laughs> That's not exactly what you're gonna be remembering him for, is this, tw this 2017 run with Origin. Uh, and they don't even win the series. They win this game no, one and they no. can, yes, amazing. Here we go, guys. And that is 50% of their wins for the entire split was a 76-minute game that is dubbed the biggest, boringest clown fiesta of a game that we've ever had in Europe. And, you know, Origin, the biggest ups and downs of maybe any team because they even bounce back, you know, in this upset Alfari era where they look competitive and then they just completely fall off a cliff and all of a sudden don't even exist anymore. I, I, I think everybody can ag agree at this point in time, no matter where you're pulling from the history of the organization, there's not enough good to outweigh the bad that you'd be like, yeah, I want Origin back in the LEC, bring them on back in. It's going to be good times, good memories. Not the case. One of the most legendary, underperforming, bad performing organizations and squads in the LEC's history. We'll see if that roster spot is just cursed because Astralis takes it oh, over. No. Now it's Carmine Corp who's got to come and save the legacy of this LEC spot. Hey, 
I'm not putting that out there to the Blue Army. I'm not entering into that one. I think I think that they've done a, an excellent job, and they're going to do the full decursifying of that position for the Carmine Corp faithful. Now, you might think, surely, the LPL and LCK, they don't have bad teams to the same degree that the LCS and LEC have had, but then I rebut you with 2020 Spring Victory 5, who not only could they not muster five wins, as their namesake says, they barely got one. A single win, I'm talking 1-32 and 32 overall game score for the Spring Split. The only question for this whole split was, are they going to win a series? Are they going to win a single game? Didn't get a series, but at least they avoided a scary, infamous 0-33. Oh, my God. It could have been just absolutely chaotic to see that go through for this Gin Air Green Wings. Yes, we are talking about them and what they were able to do in the LCK. And what V5 they first. Do- V5 first. Oh, excuse me. Getting, getting ahead of He's myself getting with these ones <laughs> all the way through. But the Victory 5 team that we're looking at from back in 2020 is not the victory five that might be the name that you're remembering now because it has had that upswing in the last couple of years let's take you on back deep down into the dark depths of this year for victory five they did a reverse origin it was have a horrible year one in 32 and then less than a year later all of a sudden they got rookie carson rich and they're vying for an lpl title but yeah 2020 spring a lot of guys you probably aren't familiar with the names on there. The one thing to highlight here is Mole, their mid laner. Mark, he played all five positions at one point in spring, which is number one on the list for our season is going terribly when we're literally putting this guy everywhere trying to fill voids. The the situation, especially the chances that it is one guy having to fill all those voids because you have so many problems, so many issues that you have to use someone that's got any level of skill to, to you know, try and plug these holes compared to a situation where, oh my God, this guy's so good. He can do anything. Of course, we're going to put him in these type of positions. That was not the type of luck and energy that was going around V5 back in 2020 is the way to look at this one. Definitely uh, a year as well that you can look at through with the big power in the LPL helped contribute to that. You had a lot of teams rising to that top level of, you know, challenger status or an elite squad. And they were absolutely taking the lunch money of a team like Victory 5 time and time again. And going back through these highlights, this was the very beginning of this COVID era. You cut to some of the, you know, everyone's playing remotely. The analyst desk, everyone's got masks on. So since a are chilled down my spine going through these. But V5, the very next split was the kind of miracle run where the Church of PP, but PP God comes in. Mole and Y4 are still on this squad and they pick up 11 wins and on our playoff team and they still had two-fifths of the starting lineup so there was just something cursed in the well water for this team in spring and that that's kind of what i really love about this story about this individual one is so many times looking through these underperforming these bad teams these historically bad teams and going through and listing them out in this type of situation You don't get the opportunity to give a little bit of hope, to bring that sprinkle of sugar on top of the situation. Victory 5, bringing in those players, turning it around immediately after such a disastrous year is that nice story to go through and remind everybody that, hey, you might find yourself on a list like this time and time, but you know what? You can always find your way to the very back to the top again. Up to this point, all the squads have been a single split that we're looking at, but Mark alluded to it. The Gin Air Green Wings. You can look at a full calendar year, and the saddest part is it's their final year in the LCK. They go 1-17 in the spring split and follow that up with a somehow even worse record of 0-18. The only team in the history of the LCK to go winless for an entire split. Yes, they picked up four games across the split but did not win a single series and even despite that they were worse in spring my the most insane stat for me is an entire split 30 plus games they got six baron buffs six oh my god no don't do it to him man yes i couldn't contain it the excitement the hype around 
Jin Air Green Wings. Definitely my favorite of these disappointing squads, of these legendarily bad teams to talk about and what they went through. 2019, of course, the landscape of the LCK needing, you know, that rebound. The LPL has emerged. They've come on through and they're taking now some of these world champions through. Who's going to rise up? What level of competition are we going to get? And we're going to get a Jin Air Green Wings rolling on through, soaring down low at the bottom of the sandings all the way through the year. Now, this was a bit poetic because this is the year for so many years we were talking about Teddy being stuck on Jin Air, being the only bright spot. And this is the year he goes to T1. He goes to SKT and they end up winning both splits. It felt like Teddy being plucked away from Jin Air was just, they were left to hit rock bottom with no propellers for this sad plane to go anywhere. Gotta remember, just like a Victory 5 situation, even in the darkest pits of despair in League of Legends, running through 1-18, and 1-19, and, and the 0-4 split after that, you still got to look through for those bright spots, and you can find those bright spots in some of these players on this team for Jin Air. You can go down to the bottom lane, pluck Mr. Kellen out of there as the support as a nice little one yourself. And even you're looking through and you're saying, hey, Mr. Mulring coming out from the jungle going on to have some success with Rogue for a little bit is one of the things to keep track of. Yeah, and you can throw in Lesser Route, who had some impact as well. But yeah, Malrang and Kellen, these are guys who are winning legit titles. Malrang's a guy who was in an MVP conversation at times through Wo Rogue. So number one, teams willing to pick any of the players from this 1-35 and debacle of Jin Air is impressive in itself and even more impressive for guys to bounce back if i guess you go from the mindset of this split to go well surely i can't have a worse year in my career right <laughs> you got to be careful with that one because i think if you're in the territory with just how bad things were for Jin air green wings or you know the squad we we're talking about before in victory five or heck, heck throw origin echo fox that curse everybody everyone into that situation it can get really bad, so I don't want to test that one. But yeah, you better believe a player like Kellen, anytime he's rolling into troubles, difficulties, tough stretches in the LCK, he's going, man, this is nothing compared to the Jin Air days. V5 and Jin Air still at least had competitive games in the most competitive regions. If you were to, in some miracle world, throw all these teams against each oh, other no. in head-to-heads, <laughs> Team Coast versus origin oh. is your grand final for worst team of all time yeah i think that's the way that i would slice it up and i unfortunately i think the lcs i think coast is losing that one even as bad even as uh, unproactive a squad as origin would be in that situation i've got enough faith that uh, that uh, there'd be enough fire at least or enough ego under someone like Froggen that we would not see that situation with that echo fox team yeah, Coast, Coast and Origin, that is as cursed as it could get for a matchup. I would make that, this is the first ever best of seven, and make someone sit through <laughs> no. an entire series of that. Oh, please, no, no, no. 60-minute game time averages. It doesn't even matter the meta. If it's the fastest it's ever been, somehow these squads would be able to drag it out. No, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see that. We've seen, a, a, look, we've been... Uh, a, tortured with some incredible LCS TSM versus Immortals or Dignitas Immortals matchups to close out a week or to be the one right before the matchup that you really want to watch. Don't 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 test us with an idea of, of the 2014 Coes versus 2017 Origin. It's a surefire way to make sure someone will never watch another game of League of Legends again <laughs> is to make them sit through that. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thank you so much for joining us and make sure you have a fantastic start to 2024. We will catch you on that flippity flip.